So I just got done watching the newest episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac and I have several things to say. I have several things to say about this episode and the current state of this franchise. So make yourself comfortable, grab a drink, grab some snacks, and let's get into this recap. So first of all, I thought this episode was okay. There were a lot of moments that I thought were quite enjoyable, but there were also a lot of moments that made me feel once again like many episodes from this season very frustrated but I will get into that later I first want to quickly recap the episode really quickly because I'm not going to sit here and recap every single scene word by word so basically we start off this episode with Mia and Ashley at Mia's home talking about Ashley's divorce and about how Ashley used to be homeless with her mom and her mom was struggling to make her ends meet at home, you know, really getting into the the, the evictions, the poverty that they were living in and the fear that Ashley holds. But I then asked myself, Ashley, all of these years where you have been collecting checks for eight, the, 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 the past eight years, where are these checks? Where do you have some type of insurance? Have you put some things aside? Um, I'm sure she makes at least 500000 a season. She's not going to be a two point whatever million like Candy, but at least she's going to make a good 300, 400, 500K a year. But that's besides the point. Um, then we move on to Wendy and Aneka's little luncheon where they try to patch things up and I hate to say it I really do I think that Wendy is coming on a little bit too hard I do understand her point of view but I also understand the point of view of Aneka and I never thought I would be here and say this because at the beginning of the season, I was not here for Miss Aneka pretty much utilizing Wendy and Wendy's sister and her mom and Lebe Iwu as her only source of a storyline. But now I see that Aneka's, Aneka has been trying to really apologize and move things forward with Wendy multiple times, but it seems that there is a disconnect. Wendy's harping on to the fact that she called Wendy's mom a witch. And Eka's harping on to the fact that her name's been uh, sent, put on a shrine. No one's really finding common ground. I am sick of it. It seems on the other hand that Wendy is really protective of her family and those allegations and I get that but also then again I see Aneka's perspective of girl your mom called us up you're upset about it but it, it, it almost feels like Wendy cannot admit fault on her family's side and it is sad to see Wendy in the middle of her family and Aneka's family pretty much because Wendy as an outsider, shrine or not, I think personally does not have anything to do with this situation. But Lord, I am tired of this storyline. I cannot hear this moving forward anymore. I really hope they neutralize things at the reunion. I really hope that if Aneka is coming back or if Wendy's coming back, 
Chow, I don't even know if both of them are going to be back for next season. I kind of feel like this is maybe Wendy's or Candace's last go around, but we'll get to that later. Anyways, Wendy storms off uh, from the table. She leaves the conversation, leaves Aneka there. Production goes up to her. Aneka's crying, not hysterically, but very emotionally because she feels like Wendy knows but can't admit fault because that would, you know, be disloyal to her family. And I kind of felt for Neka in that moment, not going to lie. And I think that she is an enjoyable cast member so far, minus the whole Wendy thing, which is pretty much 65% of her screen time, sadly. But, you know, what am I going to do about that? Then we move on to Candace and Chris talking about how last year it was Chris that was pretty much on the one that is always gone and not home. Candace was complaining and now we pretty much switched the roles. Candace is busy with her tour, her health and stuff, and Chris is feeling neglected Candace is showing off a cute, uh, a few couple of purses. I hate that Candace is pretty much not forced, but where are the group scenes? Why is she always at home? Why is she always with Chris? I like Chris. I think he's okay. I think he's fine. I think he's nice, but I, I I've seen more of Candace and Chris than Candace and X, Y, and Z. If y'all know what I'm talking about. And she's also a little concerned um, due to her doctor finding two lumps that are sad, uh, that are not sadly, but happily non diagnosed as non cancer. So we're safe on that. And my prayers go to Candace. I think if she wants to get a second opinion from another doctor, that she should to, you know, make herself feel a little bit more safe. I'm all for that, but that's pretty much it with Candace's scene. Then we have Giselle, baby. If I say this one more time, child, y'all go are going to unsubscribe from this channel so fast. Q in three, two, one. Giselle is only enjoyable when she is having scenes with her daughters i i've said it multiple times i cannot say it m more than this giselle is an outstanding mother the love she has for her daughters is out of this world we are accompanying uh, Grace's graduation. We see a glimpse of Jamal. Um, it's very emotional. We see Giselle's dad, rest in peace. We see Giselle's mom really celebrating their granddaughter. It was a really nice and sweet, wholesome moment. And then we move on to Mia, Wendy, Ashley, I believe as well, and Aneka going shopping for the trip that they're going on that uh, Robin is hosting, which is the trip to the Dominican Republic. Finally, something international. And what I... I I'll, I'll give Robin her a, a piece of a flower for inviting Kiarna. Kiarna, if y'all didn't know, if y'all haven't really watched the episodes like that is the friend of of season eight that is supposed to be and girl i will get on wendy later that is supposed to be wendy's friend but kiarna my good girl already has some organic connections to robin they've known of each other previously and kiarna has some connections to giselle's i think hairdresser, hair stylist, designer, friend. I, I forgot his name. And Kiarna seems like a good time. Honey, she has a med spa. She has a good coin. 
She's pretty. She has a man. She has the housewife looks. She has the fashions. I hope Kiana is here to stay because we need some new, fresh blood for season nine, honey. And so, yeah. Thank God for Robin for including her. Um, we all arrive in the Dominican Republic. Kiana has a really bad flight. She's feeling all sorts of ways. And Candace and Wendy, and I hate to say it, are partially paying her dust. I felt they were so distant from each other. And I would have loved if they would have played this a little bit more strategically and really pulled Kiarna to their side and really force multiplied their alliance by, you know, including Kiarna. But that's not what they did. They let that card go into Giselle's and Robin's hand because Kiarna is getting along really well with Giselle and Robin. You have Giselle asking Kiarna after the flight in her room, girl, are you okay? Do you need anything? And I really appreciated that. I felt that was genuine. I felt that was nice. Well, I, I, ta I take that back, the genuine part. She probably also did it to make Candace and Wendy look a certain type of way, but Candace and Wendy contributed to that themselves just fine which I was really upset about in this episode. And yeah, the girls arrive at the resort. We are all fighting about the rooms as always. Um, Karen wants to have a seaside view. She pulls out her credit card. She wants to pay the resort lady. The resort is beautiful, by the way. Good job, Robin. And Robin and Karen get into it. Robin is, uh, Karen is cussing Robin the F out, talking about, talking about, uh, Robin, get the F out of my face, girl. <laughs> Those are the same old, same old storylines. I cannot, I, I am, I am processing. That's why I, I can barely string a cohesive sentence together. Don't get me wrong. I love a good when Karen reads Robin down moment, but w when are we, it feels like we are recycling. It feels like we are reliving season after season, the same one, just with a slightly different font. You feel me? But anyways, um, that's pretty much it with this episode. We then have the Grand Dame, coronation of Aneka by Giselle because she feels like she wants to be messy because because she feels like she wants to be messy once again and so she gives the title of a grand dame to Aneka and listen everybody's looking at the three of them crazy it's Ashley Giselle and Aneka Candace goes to her room. She says each and every single time this imp <laughs> implying about, you know, talking about Giselle has the opportunity to twist and turn the knife into someone's back. And, and I'm sure that was playful. I'm, I'm sure Karen is not mad. She takes it. But that seems to be one of the only contributions to the group that Giselle has. But... Yeah, so this trip is off to a rocky start. And I'm going to be really honest with you. You can see it in my channel. You can see it in my recaps. My recaps have gotten shorter with each and every single franchise. Beverly Hills does not have much going on at all. Potomac is pretty much like a divided show. And you feel that. You feel the distance between these women. You feel the nastiness, the, 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 the hatred that these women feel towards each other. And there is not much more to say in this recaps because how many times am I going to repeat myself? 
the only ones that are working this season that are really giving their all are Mia and Karen. Candace doesn't have any group scenes. Wendy doesn't. Robin has been gone. She's scathed by. She is just there to not be there. Um, Giselle showed us her pretend boyfriend for 20 minutes and that's it. Um, that it, it's, 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 it's sad. It's frustrating to not be as invested and not be so caught by the episodes anymore. Potomac and Potomac has a a big problem going on for season nine. They'll need to either fire a couple of people, reboot the show, which I hope they don't. And I, I don't know. I really do not know how this franchise should continue on. I don't want to shit on it completely. I'm obviously going to finish watching it, but expect shorter recaps for me because I'm not going to be sitting here each and every single week telling you that Mia and Karen are the only ones working, that Wendy and Candace are being iced out, and that Wendy and Candace actually, for this week, had a chance to include Kiarna, make her feel a part of their duo, make a trio out of it, and really play the game, strategically put someone on their side, fortify and solidify their side, but to, who am I to criticize? But anyways, that was it for this very lackluster recap for this week's episode of Potomac. Let me know what you guys think of this week's episode like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell down below and make sure to see me in my next video thanks so much for watching